brewing of the Dagda beer. I'm going to do it in the kitchen. I'm not going to use the fancy burners and stuff that we've got. I'm not going to use the air stone for aeration. I'm not going to do any of that. The most sophisticated piece of equipment that I'm using, other than, you know, a brew bucket, a an airlock, um, and a, a kettle, and a lid for the brewing bucket, the most sophisticated thing I'm using is going to be a racking cane and that's just because it to me it's a lot safer like I'm not having to you know wander around with heavy containers of stuff you know too far I've not got to hook up um, you know a copper coil to you know cool it down we're just gonna do this super old school so anybody with a kitchen can brew a beer so um, let's let's Get along and follow the instructions, shall we? All right, so according to the instructions, we need one to two gallons of water for 30 minutes. So you can measure it out with one of these, or you can cheat and use a one gallon cowboy. All right, oh. so I've got two gallons of water in the brew pot here. I'm just gonna sanitize a thermometer. This is just an ordinary kitchen and meat thermometer so anything that is going to be going into your um brew pot especially after um it's finished boiling it's all got to be sanitized but it's just a really good habit to practice you know sanitizing things before they're going in um i know my husband likes to sanitize um you know the hops bags and everything else that we have going going in there so I'm going to use um, the stuff that they've provided um, to be able to brew this beer um, I'm not going to use the hot bags and things that I normally have um, for this and you, you don't really need hops bags it just means that there's like less sediment in the brew kettle and you know it's a little easier to clean up so it doesn't matter too much um, I'm not going to use them. I'm just going to add them into the brew kettle so you can see how it how it looks. Um, but normally I would use a hops bag and I'll just show you what one looks like. Oh, if I can remember where I put it. So it's just essentially like a really fine, it's a fine mesh, almost like, you know, nylon mesh curtains um, so you just put the hops into here because these pellets break apart they'll disintegrate um, quite rapidly um, during the the boiling process so it just kind of helps keep things contained a little bit better so let's have a look at the instructions I'm gonna get the lid on help get things heating up so we need to heat it up to about 155 degrees and then we are going to add in the grains. I'm going to go ahead and put the grains into the bag after I have a cup of tea. I've got more water filtering and you know really I'm only filtering the water just because I live so close to the the base and who knows what junk is like running off and what they're doing on there so I'm just going to double bag this so it doesn't go through So these are just kind of like, like bandages. And the grain bags just stop the grain from, you know, floating around in, in the container. And they're only needed to be in there for a certain amount of time to impart the toasty, malty, delicious flavors. So when you buy a kit, Usually, um, the grains are already milled, and 
milling them. I don't know whether you'll be, be able to see. Let me see if I can if I can zoom in. There we go. So you can see here you've got the white bits and stuff, and that's all the cracked grain in there. So that's going to be imparting the sugars and the flavors and stuff in here. And for me, when this is all dried, oh, not all dried, cooled down, sorry, um, I'm going to be giving all this grain to my chickens to eat. So that will, it's a nice treat for them, it'll help keep them happy. They particularly like it when we've been making things like an oatmeal stout um, because <laughs> they get to uh, take some, eat some oatmeal as well as, uh, or oats, as well as the uh, hops grains. So this is already on, it's cooking. And when it gets up to temperature, and I'm gonna be checking the temperature periodically, all we're going to do is we're going to steep this in one side and we're going to carefully attach it onto here. We don't want it to be anywhere where, you know, we're going to have flames coming up and they're going to be catching. You know, we don't want, we don't want any accidents, no fires um, or anything like that because that would really put a damper on your day. So, drum me back when we hit the temperature. See where we're at right now. We're at about 85 degrees. So we've got quite, quite a way to go. All right, welcome back. Um, so we're now at 155. I've just put in the grains. Um, so they're just steeping nicely. Now these specialty grains are what's going to give the flavor, the color, um, all those kind of characteristics of a beer. And that those multi tones, those kind of biscuity um, or chocolatey flavors, those things are all driven by the malts that you use. And there are hundreds and hundreds of different malts available. So, you know, getting a kit like this is going to um, enable you to really see kind of those changes in, um, you know, the malt and what those changes mean for the base flavor for your beer. Now, we do a lot of grain brewing now. We we really don't use any kits. I literally just bought this kit um really to show you guys how to how to brew with one and, you know, show you how easy they are. Um but when you're doing an all grain batch, the bulk of the um, sugars that are going to create the alcohol are coming from a base malt which is usually a two row or um, a um, Maris Otter um, malting grain um, but with an extract kit your sugars are coming from these so they're coming from the liquid malt extract and they're coming from the dry malt extract so those don't get added in yet. We're still doing the steeping, um, which is 30 minutes steeping at 155 degrees Fahrenheit. And during that time, all the flavors are going to come from these wonderful grains. And then we move on to adding more water and then we're gonna start the boil and the hops additions. So I'm not going to film this for 28 minutes. Um, we're going to join me back for the next bit and during the boil I'm going to show you some things that happen during the boil but I'm not going to be filming it constantly for 60 minutes um, so we'll be kind of cutting in and out during the hop additions so you can see what's happening okay so join me back for the boil all right so the liquid malt extract is in and I've put in half of the dry malt extract um, there's just not enough room in this container to get all of it in. Um, and it's starting to look like a beer. It definitely smells wonderfully and malty. And you can see we've had a, another colour change now. The malt extracts are in. It's looking a lot darker. Um, 
everything's very sticky at this point because of all the sugars um, so all that we're waiting for now is this to come back to the boil then I'm going to add in my one ounce of Columbus pellets if you want a clearer beer where you don't have to worry so much about loads of mess in the bottom of your brew kettle use a hops bag I'm not bothering um, it's not something that you need to brew beer but it's something that makes the process a bit easier to clean up this bit does take um, some babysitting because with it having a lot of sugar and things in here it is prone to a bit of a boil over so do keep an eye on it at this stage Um, if you're using like these skinny, um, thin um, stock pots, then you're going to need to make sure that you are checking it frequently and stirring it to make sure that it doesn't catch on the bottom and burn because, um, you know, that burning matter is going to end up in your beer and it's going to change the flavour of it as well. Yeah, almost there for the boil. Until the foam's changed. We're almost there. And there we go. You can see? We're now boiling. Okay, so in go the hops, for the first set of hops is the Columbus okay you can see now it's this always happens don't worry usually the first hop edition you get this happen and then it's kind of a lot more chill from here this is exactly where I wanted to be filming the hop edition so you can see so now we've just got two Boil this bad boy for 60 minutes. Oops. And I'm going to be keeping an eye on this for a little bit. It's going to be um, boiling without the lid on because I need the water level to go down so I can add in the rest of this malt extract. So. turning it down a little bit more because it's a little vigorous and um, I'm reading the instructions it seems that in actual fact the yeast and this particular mixture of um, the wort that we have here this is this is the wort that's going on um, it's quite lively I mean this is very lively this kind of looks like some satanic swamp or something I have no idea it's quite frightening that it's bubbling up like that um, but um, what we're gonna have to do is the airlock that I had at the beginning isn't going to be suitable we're gonna need to do what's known as a blow-off tube and it is super easy in fact it's probably easier than putting together an airlock. Alright guys we've got 15 minutes so coming up to 15 minutes left on the boil so I am preparing the sink to um, cool down the wort right afterwards so I'm putting in some cold water I'm going to do cold water first and then I will um, put ice packs and things in it um, you know when I change out first couple of flushes of water so I used to um, do it in the sink or even the bathtub I used to fill the bath with um, cold water and put the um, big stock pot in there with cold water all around it to help cool it down um, I love brewing in winter particularly in New Jersey um, 
where I would just kind of take the entire pot and stick it outside in a icy snowdrift and leave it there for a few minutes to cool down and then I would move on to um, putting it into the brew bucket. So we're doing this nice and easy for people that don't have wart chillers and all that fancy stuff because you know when you first start brewing you might think ah this isn't really for me um, you know because it, it does take time um, but I think it's definitely well worth it at the end of the day when you've got you know five gallons of delicious beer um, that cost you a lot less than what it would at the grocery store all right we're at the 45 minute boil point so we need to add in the remaining dry malt extract now we've got a little bit of space in here so in goes the pilsner i'm gonna have to do this a little bit at a time because it's still on the heat Come on, baby. Okay. And in go. Centennial. Hops. And these smell definitely more kind of earthy like wandering around a beautiful pine forest sound like one of those wine tasters don't I? the fragrance bouquet all right ladies and gentlemen we are at the five minute point so 0.5 ounces of woo and for my next trick, oh geez. always be careful when handling knives. In goes the Simcoe. Mm, love the smell of those. And the Will Flock. So this is a flocculating agent. It is going to make things aggregate and fall to the bottom so you know one thing you will notice if you get really into brewing is the um, extract beers are often a little cloudier um, more so if you're bottling it than if you're going to do it in a keg now the final hop additions are some of my favorites so I love the smell of citra I really wish I could get hold of rhizomes to grow it Oh, it's just, it's just wonderful. It's just so fruity. And I've never heard of the Falconer's Flight hops before, but it sounds damn cool, so. That's kind of a delicate floral. So I really encourage you to smell the ingredients when you're making beer and you know even wine as well because you know it's by using your senses to you know really experience the ingredients that you're going to be able to create something wonderful two minutes until the final final pop additions go in and then we're done we're on to cooling this bad boy down and 
adding the yeast. Okay, we're on the final countdown. We get my oven mix. Very important tool when brewing. Alright, in goes the Falconer's Flight Hops. And then the Citra. The Citra I've noticed is usually last in a hop edition or it's a dry hop ingredient because um, the fragrance is so powerful, it's quite a volatile oil in there. Alright. Turn this bad boy off for heat. All right, you got to cover it. Now I'm going to put it in the sink with the cold water. Oh, All righty. So the aim of the game now is to cool this down as quickly as possible so the quicker that you cool it down the quicker we can pitch the yeast and the quicker um, this can establish before any wild yeasts or anything are going to get into it so we've got some cold water in here that's already getting warm from the convection so i'm going to be lifting this up i'm going to move move this out of the way drain it, add some more cool water, put it back in. I'm going to do this a couple of times and then I'm going to be putting some uh, ice packs around it to cool it down further. don't really want my oven mitts getting wet. Okay, and I'm just going to be keep keep doing this until it's cooled down sufficiently. Um, definitely so where I don't have to use oven gloves to be lifting this thing in and out. Um, and when it's a little cooler, I will be putting this into the brew bucket um, but I'll show you just the last bits of sanitizing the equipment before we do that. Finish off with the sanitizing. Got my star sign in a spray bottle ready to go. This makes things a lot easier and a lot quicker. Been soaking, soaking all this since we started brewing. This is the racking cane.
I mentioned earlier that I'm not going to be using these um, oh, three-piece airlocks. Let's pull that out sometimes. That's good. clean and sanitized. Right, so for those of you who saw me racking the wine, you're going to see why I love this racking cane so much. Alright, so this is still hot. That's it. It's siphoning. It's doing its thing. How easy was that? Okay, so the water is now in the fermentation bin. I'm going to add some more water. I'm going to add cold water. five gallons there now so I need to take the temperature because I can't pitch the yeast until it's at about 88 degrees at the highest thermometer got my sanitizer got to sanitize it again don't want to contaminate this from this I mean really from now anything that's going into these has to be sanitized Alright, so I accidentally didn't hit record on me pitching the yeast, um, but I just opened up the bag and put it in here. And to make the blow off tube, we literally took some sanitized tubing and you're just putting it through the hole where the airlock would normally be. That's why I really like these brew buckets because they're grommeted so and I can fit the tubing through here and then I've got a conical flask or an Erlenmeyer flask that's just got water in it so this is going to act the same way as an airlock um, the gas is going to come out and bubble through and if you've got pretty rigorous yeast um, sometimes you know the actual airlocks and things can come flying off your brew or the lids can come off so Good strong lid, blow off tube, you'll be golden. 
So that's it for the first brewing. This is going to stay in here for a week and then we will be racking it into another brew bucket and doing the dry hopping. So stay tuned for that. Good morning. It's now the next day and I'm checking for fermentation. And as you can see, it's bubbling nicely. We're gonna get another one. Yeah, it's coming. There we go. For other yeasts and stuff, the frequency of bubbling can be really high, can be really slow. As long as it's bubbling, it's fermenting. <laughs> 